Tuesday, 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 Tuesday. Coming in hot. Coming in hot, episode 443 already. I don't even do that. Like, you're probably supposed to do like a pause. (laughs) It's probably the professional. You think after 443 episodes, we would know a thing or two. But I don't know a thing or two. We don't care. Yeah. Who cares? So what? Have a Pinot Grigio and go to bed. And go to bed. How are you today, my beloved? I'm doing pretty well. Good. I'm doing, yes. You know, um, well, I would say I was like a little upset earlier because like we've had two days of like cloudy skies in LA and it's like the middle of summer. So what the heck? But it's uh, weird. You know, it's clearing up. So can't I can't really I know. Complain. When I talk to my friends and stuff in Pittsburgh, it'll be like 95 and I'm like, huh. Yeah. It's uh, for real. We've, we're having a chilly summer. <laughs> What's going on? I don't yeah. like it. Do, you did say you brought the cold weather. Remember when you first moved here? Like, yep. Or, yep. So maybe that it's back. Or you guys were all lying all this time, and then I believed it. <laughs> right. It's like actually not that lovely here. It's just like rags. Um, I just got a text actually while we're recording, mm-hmm. and Adam would like to know: Do you prefer the brain candy bikini or one piece for your oh. swimming needs? I'm a one piece gal. Okay, great. Yeah. I feel like I can more confidently move and do the activities that I like to do. Yeah, because you're not a just sunbathing kind of gal. Correct. And I have had (laughs) a a few close calls, no, not even close calls, full blown like bathing suit around, shorts around the ankles when I'm like jumping (laughs) off the diving board. Yes. So I don't even risk it these days. I just go straight one piece. No, you're right. That is a real danger. Yeah, I've and done even, that. And even, you know, the um, we have like a little jet thing you hold on to and it kind of like scoots you yes. around under the water. Oh my God, and it's so much fun. And a few times, it is so fun. Yeah, even that force has made my undies, well, what do you call yeah. them? Bottoms, my bikini bottoms. Right, bikini fall, bottoms. Fall right on down. So. Yeah, I'm like, ugh, buy me dinner, water. <laughs> right, I'm not that kind of gal. <laughs> Anyway, Jeez. I'm glad we're here. This will actually be releasing on my birthday, so you people <gasps> need to get on Happy over birthday! to my bam, Instagram bam, bam, and bam, tell bam, me bam. how much you love me. <laughs> Everybody go tell Susie how much you love her. Also, <laughs> can you please look into purchasing her um, the <laughs> old school igloo coolers, which I saw and I'm like, she needs the full set. Yeah, and I keep getting ads for it now because you well, sent oh. that t- to me or whatever. Yeah, because it's so cool. And I love it's it. It's adorable. I know. Sold out of the one that I wanted to get, the the one that goes outside for the, like the water and the pitcher. And- yeah, it's super popular. Everyone's yeah. hit, getting their uh, hydration. This hashtag not an ad. No. <laughs> no. Unless, of They're course, if you would like to sponsor us, in which case, please send me that cooler. <laughs> Um, I mean, right. Susie, that cooler, whatever. Yes, but, you know. we all Since need my, to Since my pool party is now happening at your house, it's kind of like a present for you and me. So this is, this is very selfish of me, what I'm doing now. I think that's been such a blessing. If you guys have like any outdoor space, it, is, it makes a world of difference during this, oh my God. these uncertain times. <laughs> right? So funny. Because um, when, even when you guys come over, we can stay really far apart and still have a grand old time. Yes, it really is fun. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. And Endless Lincoln's even summer. got it set up to where he can like maneuver the raft to where he can <laughs> drop off like like Snacks. chips and dip mm-hmm. and and maintain a 6 foot uh <laughs> yeah. social distance. It's really uh, impressive. Yeah, we worked it all out over We've here. We've taught him well. Yeah, I know a lot of people too are trying to decide like what to do about their kids in school. Yeah. I don't I don't have the answers. I'm just saying I feel for you if you're going through that. It sucks. Yes. Yes. And if you're a teacher, I feel for you because it's just tough times, oh, man. God. I couldn't even imagine. Shout they out to already the had the worst raw right. deal. I know. Like when did oh teachers God. become first responders, basically? Right. They really are. Ren was saying that the other day. He's like, you know, like I really thought – like a, a teacher's job was like, you know, you're supposed to go there and then they like t- just like teach the kids stuff and like there you go. That's what school's for to learn. Mm-hmm. But he's like, nope, school is for everything. And yeah. now we don't have who's going to what. How are the parents going to go to work? How are they like these these their teachers? Oh, you feel so bad for them. We all do. But yes. and, you know what? My friend Jesse brought up shout out Jesse uh, <laughs> that I didn't even think about. She said she has fifth graders. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she uh, she teaches fifth grade, 
And she said in the beginning of the school year, it was different because like when they went into quarantine because Mm. or in lockdown, because she had already built a rapport with all of them. Absolutely. And so it was just going, moving it online and she knew how to respond to each of those students. Exactly. Now she's got a freaking like entertain. uh, 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 Who can do that? No, I do not envy them, and I never have. So now it's they so have much to be worse. like, uh, like, like entertainers too, and, and and get keep a child's attention on a computer screen. That like, I mean, it's, I don't know. You have to like be up there with video game, compete with video games, right? Come on. No, and then there was a period of time when people were like hacking into Zoom. You know, like the kind of like terrorist stuff and violence <gasps> and all oh, that. Oh, yes. And then they wow. had to re reset up everything with passwords, and I don't envy them. It's awful. Oh my god! Yeah. So we just bowed out, and we're doing um, total homeschool, not affiliated with any um, school district or anything. I think that the, was best the Butler for us. Academy for <laughs> Exceptional <laughs> of Children. Excellence. Yeah, the Butler Academy of Excellence. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, whatever you decide, I know it's hard decision, and. I'm I'm feeling it. I feel you guys. Um, oh, well, let's keep it on the light side. We don't like to get heavy around here, right? How, but this all this is fun because this is light, but we can be super mad. Oh, so, I love that. A, I love um, being mad at something new. Yeah, or the same old thing repackaged. <laughs> like as long as it's the patriarchy, it is. The, woo, you had I guess. It. Oh, it's my favorite thing to be mad at. Well, tell me what they did this time. Yes, here's what they did. There was a study that was done. In- oh my god! What <laughs> is this? The doctor thing? Yes. Oh my god! Poor Ren was trying to sleep last night, and, and I am looking all at all these up. photos, and I'm like, oh, do. Uh, and he's like, leans over, just kind of taps me, like, I have no idea what's going on, but I was getting real fired up. Tell the people what, what yes, we're mad about today. And you were right to be mad. There was a study that was done, I think with probably good intentions, that was designed to give um, medical students a heads up about social media and the things that one might post that could be a problem when it comes to hiring and when it, whenever they graduate and want to get a job. And in... Basically, what ended up happening is they were like slut shaming yes. female medical students and yeah. other professionals for basically going swimming. Yeah, because like, we think you are, or, or, or what do they call them, unprofessional, mm-hmm. uh, pr- like promiscuous photos. Mm-hmm. And the label, the photos that got labeled promiscuous, were ones of them, like on their family vacation yeah. to the Bahamas the year before. Right. Like, oh, come on. Right. Or just like or drinking in alcohol. Their family like, pool with a pina colada like we, we yes. do. Yes. God. I might need a, a pina colada after reading this. <laughs> I know, right. That's going to make me drink Lord. more. Yes. I liked the guys who were, there was one uh, mm-hmm. uh, male doctor who posted, uh, <laughs> and since they're going to call them female doctors, I might as well call them male doctors. Yes. Um, so there was a male doctor who posted a picture that was like, does this look unprofessional, guys? And Absolutely. it was like him like, like brushing his hair back underneath a waterfall. <laughs> it's like, it's <laughs> ridiculous. And so it's like, yeah, right. Like, come on. I can't. Yeah, because they were including, in addition to swimwear, particularly bikinis, <laughs> um, they were also just including general alcohol, which there's absolutely nothing wrong with having a drink while you're not working. Right. Absolutely <laughs> nothing. Now, for you, does it make you angry at these people that created the study or more just that the, the reality is that that bikini pic might actually be a problem? Yes, that that yeah. one. Right. That one. Because they're not that, wrong. Right. And yeah. Some people do think you shouldn't post bikini pictures. And it posts, I don't know why. it points to it, right. Yeah. So oh my to God. me, it's like, yeah, I mean, the study could have been improved and they didn't think it through, I guess, but... The real problem is that they're right, that it it could affect your hiring potential. What yes. bullshit? Make I your know, account really fucking does. private. Well, and I can't help but think here that these are the, the same guys who are like, 
making this claim about like those are oh those are promiscuous photos are the exact same guys who are heavily tipping the strippers who are saying that they're just doing this to get through med school so you can't have it both ways (laughs) <laughs> to get through med school. Yes, Sarah. That's it. They're like, no, no, I just want you to be this. I support yes. you while you're uh, while you're in this in this like in this light. Mm-hmm. But like, mm-mm. nope, this can't have a white coat. Nope. I don't like that. I really I think because of my puritanical upbringing, I really get fired up about people who want me to be ashamed that I have a sexual identity. Yeah. Um, and that I have a body, <laughs> right? Just just a body of any kind, right? Because they'd be mad if you wore a bikini and didn't have the body that they think is desirable, <gasps> right? Like there's so many limitations, you cannot win. Yeah, show off your butt, but only if it's this kind of butt. And we like a big booty, but only if it's in the correct ratio to your waist. Like fuck, you can't win. Who cares? Just do you and fuck them all. That's why so many times, especially in meetings, I get people being like, are you really a doctor? Oh, God. Because their brain like short circuits if you don't fit what that means right. in their brain. Right. The cognitive dissonance, right? Isn't that like it? Fuck. Like creates that of like, uh, uh Yeah, this uh, is an inconvenient fact for me. I <laughs> would put you in a different box. <laughs> I'd put you in the stripper box. Right. <laughs> What but do you, you mean you're a dog? Tits. And that we're talking about extremes here. These weren't even the photos. They were just talking about photos of people like, like you said, having a pina colada in the backyard. I mean, for real, uh, they were tame. These weren't like so back. Not that I care if they were right. super sexy, but they're just regular. Right. Anyway, what is not regular is our passion for best fiends. Oh my gosh! I mean. What, that, we have the, so much fun with it. I do. The level I'm on speaks for themselves. Speaks for itself. <laughs> so there you go. Stop bragging. I do find it really fun to be able to participate with Lincoln mm-hmm. because really any age group can play and he is he enjoys it and finds it challenging and I can play with yes. him or or in tandem. It's just really a fun thing to do. Um, if you want to break from the news and uh, oh my God, I need <laughs> everything it. else that's online, this is a wonderful way to yes. relax and get away from it all. Hunting for encourage. your fiends, way more fun. Clicking all the boxes <laughs> to see what prizes you're going to get and what... It's very satisfying. It's very fun. Yes. Yeah, and they make new cute characters all the time, and they have really fun monthly themed challenges. Oh, They yeah. have thousands of levels already with new levels, events, and characters added every month. So it's hours of fun right at your fingertips. We hear from Brainiacs all the time that tell us uh, how much they're enjoying it. And you can even play offline with over 100 million downloads and tons of five-star reviews. Best Fiends is a must-play. Download Best Fiends free on the Apple App Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R. Best Fiends. You're going to get go. addicted. Don't say I didn't warn you. It's or really you're fun. Welcome. Yeah. And it's both. a nice, like, yes. break. Because I have found what many people find right now, which is that sometimes going online is a real minefield. And, oh, right. You can't do you it. You know, yeah. So if you just want to be sure, like, this is actually going to be a break for my little brain and yes. emotions. There you go. I told you I had to start watching Family Matters in the morning. Yeah, it's the same idea, right? Yeah. Isn't so that helpful to that. you? Oh, it's the best. And then if we're feeling, like, more cerebral, we'll wake up with Jeopardy. Yeah. Which is great. Well, I mean, the college tournament because, you know, we need to get, feel good about ourselves I love in the those morning. Ones. And, yeah, right. <laughs> and, um, like the Family Matters thing, I had read another article in the New York Times about nostalgia, which we yes, keep talking about because people seem to be experiencing this yearning for something comfortable and familiar. And the New York Times article was so great because it was saying how trauma, like we're all in right now. Mm-hmm. Um, takes away our gray areas and it divides <gasps> our timeline into like a before and after. And mm-hmm. nos- they were saying nostalgia can act like a transitional object, like a child's blanket or stuffed animal. 100%. They can usher you into the new reality and it can help you self-soothe during that transition. And I thought that was so insightful. This is so accurate. I find this mm-hmm. to be very, very, very true. Mm. And it kind of, it, you were saying like the only trouble is if you kind of get stuck in that and then you only want to look back and. Well, yeah. It, when the, the, yeah. the positive reflection of the past becomes the bar, 
mm-hmm. to which you compare all your other current experiences and nothing can live up to the happy memory or the feelings. But if we can focus on the joy that watching and enjoying those nostalgic things creates inside of us and then we know like what that feels like oh my Mm -hmm. goodness this is what happiness feels like then it's like you're able to recognize that as you move throughout your day easier and and aim towards it and and Mm -hmm. be like oh i know what this is i'm happy and joyful right now and so there you go yeah and i i liked how they kind of compared it to the stuffed animal and stuff because most kids have those or you might have had one when you were little or still do lammy just saying yeah (laughs) and like when you were going into kindergarten or something you might have wanted to bring it for a few days but then eventually you're on your own and you're okay oh that's really good (laughs) that fit that's perfect yeah and so it helps Mm -hmm. you transition and i like that yeah people hmm um, that makes me want to go down memory lane of some other, like, TV shows. Yeah. And, you know, things that... Music. Yeah. That's also a good, powerful one. Even yeah. certain smells, like when you cook something that maybe your mom cooked. Mm. Oh. It can be comforting. Yeah. I'm going to do that. Yeah. Terrible pancakes. No, I'm just kidding. Sorry, Mom. But those <laughs> things were terrible. <laughs> She made what other stuff really them? well. Oh my god, we used to laugh. My mom, first of all, my mom is an amazing cook when she is focused on the meal at hand. But when it's yeah. like the morning and she's like, you know, single mom of three and doing other stuff, and like she would make pancakes. But I think it was often that she would forget that they were on the stove for a while, and they were always they always tended to be a little hard. And like <laughs> we used to fuck with her oh and like throw them like frisbees. And one time we were like, Aww. these are so they, we could use them as doorstop. And she was like, you guys are so mean. And then we were like, no, no, but we're being re- like serious. Like, look. And we like stacked him up and really used to it. She, she like laughed, of course. Man. But I'm sure she was probably like heartbroken because here she was trying to do the nice thing and make us a nice breakfast. And, you oh know, God. ADD probably runs in my family. So like <laughs> I can't make a, a, you know, that's hard for me too. And I have to be very focused. So I get it. But oh God. yeah. Poor Sally. Poor Sally. No. I was I very happy other things. for her. She did make bomb ass tuna noodle casserole. Yeah, it just wasn't her pancakes weren't her strength. Right, they weren't. I was very happy to see that she was, um, you know, recognized in her industry as one oh, of the best yes. psychics. Psychic of the week or month. Was it week or month? Mythic week. Yes. I mean, that tickled me. Oh, I was so gosh. happy for her. Also, speaking of which, this I got to just share because this is a, a, a <laughs> story that just like you'll love. So, you know, Jenny, who won the challenge, how could you not yeah. know her? We all love her. She yeah. is, is, I follow her on, on Instagram and she yeah. puts up all these great workout videos and like workout uh, uh, like challenges. And so, you know, my mom's talking about how she's been, oh, my mom sends me this picture of her doing yoga and this amazing pose Aww. that like, I don't even know how to do. And Ren and I were like, uh, excuse me. Like we can't even get into that pose. Oh, so I was like telling her, I'm like, mom, you did such a great job. So then I, and she's like, oh yeah, you know, just got to move. Like got to be a little yogi, blah, blah, blah. And so then mm-hmm. I send, <laughs> I send her the video that Jenny did of like, here, mom, look at this cool video. Like, look at these great r- workout routines. Like, I'm sitting on my couch in my sweatpants, <laughs> definitely yeah. eating pizza or something like that. Yeah, not being a yogi. Not be- doing any of that. Th- like sending my mom like, hey, this looks like a cool workout video as I like wipe the Dorito like crumbs <laughs> on my pants. And yeah. <laughs> my mom 20- within 24 hours sends me – and I they're like hard videos. It's like how to do um, – it's like you put towels on the floor and you use them as like sliders on a tile floor. So it's like really good oh, yes. w- hard workouts. Yes, yeah. My mom sends me videos of her completing every one of the challenges and not just like you're kidding, like making it look easy. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Now I'm going to have to actually do this shit. Okay. Wait a minute. So Why is she it. abandoning us in our laziness right? and becoming all Remember when she told it's like we were talking about how it feels like you're just putting on a wetsuit and we just live in an ex- like a, a, just a wetsuit all the time of this extra. Yeah. Like no, my mom's taking the wetsuit off and now she's like, you know. Oh my Dude, god! I know. Well, good for her. We're raising the bar over here, so now I got to get going and got to like work out. So, <sighs> shout out to Jenny for her workout videos and mom for actually doing them. <laughs> <laughs> I love picturing Sally doing Jenny's. Oh, I'm going to send you the video because it's the best. She goes like, 
Okay, yes. exercise number two. Are we having fun or what? And like, oh I was God. like, Mom, you should do these videos. Do you think that it's making, like, do you see any change in her look? I mean, she was always very uh, trim and Oh, I mean, fit. if she does this for like a week, right. it would be impossible not to. Wow. Yeah, I don't so, know. I'm there tired you go. of it. I know. Oh, please. You're doing a whole bunch of work, too. <laughs> I just go in your pool and tread water for a while and call that work. <laughs> Right, you'll find me at the bottom. Yeah, I, I suppose I hike. That counts. Yeah, it does count we're for hikers. sure. We're, we're hikers. We hike. All move. I do dance, as you know. Oh, I do a lot of uh, yes, house dancing. Dancer. Yeah, house dancing. Mm-hmm. Yes, <laughs> like when you're house just at dancing, your house, but not privately. two house music. That's different. Just Absolutely two music in not. her house. That's funny. God, can you picture me doing that? No, but that would be hilarious. <laughs> I want, because I bet you would do, like, I want to get a video of you dancing to 70s disco music and then lay it over some house music at the same, (laughs) this would be hilarious. I can already see this. I don't know how to do any of those things, but I'm sure TikTok will teach me. Mm, Well, I mean, we do, we do try to be healthy. And one of the ways we do that is using ritual vitamins, as you guys know, which is much easier than the Jenny workouts that Sarah's mom is doing. Much easier. Um, (laughs) Because <laughs> these come to your door and they're really tasty and smell great, which I always appreciate about these vitamins because I've tried others and they are not. Um, and they just want to give you everything that you ought to be getting from your diet nice and easy and make it so that it doesn't hurt your stomach or make you sick. These are gentle on an empty stomach and have high quality ingredients and they'll just help you stay healthier. Day- daily changes can lead to big results. So start small today. Ritual is offering our listeners 10% off your first three months. Try it out. Satisfaction guaranteed. Go to ritual.com slash brain candy to start your ritual today. That's 10% off during your first three months at ritual.com slash brain candy. I still, I've yes. taken these for years and I really, really love them. Yes. I promise. It's your ritual. It is my ritual. Mm-hmm. Um, let me tell you about this interesting little tidbit. I, I even Adam didn't know, and it's about Britain. So, oh, let's hear uh, it. Apparently, before um, homosexuality was decriminalized in 1967 in England, they gay folks had created sort of a secret language so that they could talk to each other without fear of being arrested. <laughs> is this and, like stuck a feather in his hat and called a macaroni kind of thing? Yes, like it's kind of Englishy. Yeah, like Yankee Doodle Dandy, sort of. That's what I'm thinking. But less coherent. Like they were. Oh, really? It, yeah, like a lot of the words are made up rather oh. than a word that exists that is representing something else. Oh my gosh, tell me. Well, so they were saying that in the most recent David Bowie album, of course he's dead, but um, I guess his oh my last God. album. <gasps> I forget that David Bowie is dead. Oh no! Are you sad all over again? Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know, but that was just, I just can't. I I don't know why I didn't. Yes, he's one of those people. That Maybe because like, we what? saw that video. Did, have you recently seen this video recirculating of him in like the 70s saying uh, about MTV? Oh yeah, and about how, MTV. Yes, and I saw that, mm-hmm. and in my mind, I'm like, yeah, he's still fighting the good fight now, or you know, he's been fighting the fight since yeah. the beginning. I'm like, wait a sec. Oh my god. So are yeah, he. heaven lucked out because yeah. he is. Oh. Uh, Giving them some entertainment, but That's right. in his last album, he had some lyrics that were in this language. The language is called Polari, and this is an example. I, this is what it said: "China so sound, so TT up this mal chick say party up mooj sings Bowie, and in it, like if he were to oh. translate it, it would be "girl so pretty, so pretty up this boy say party up man." And he's using this secret gay language. Oh, that's kind of cool. It is. And I like that he's always including underrepresented populations yes. by kind of a nod to them. I, and, they would know what yeah. it meant, but we don't, which is so cute. And scholars of language call this lavender linguistics, oh, which is fucking that's cool. adorable. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, it's just... Basically, oppressed peoples have to work around the system and Always. often come up with these kind of secret languages. I I don't know this to be true, but I imagine like in um, like slavery that probably happened. I a was lot thinking as well. the same. Well, I, I think with songs. Yeah, 
you know, mm-hmm. I think that's mm-hmm. it. Like you can hide thing, messages and things like that in music and something that, you know, maybe somebody's not listening to or, or code words for stuff. I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you yeah. got to. Oh, goodness sakes. And I mean, it's now, of course, people don't need to use the language. So it's not something that's spoken widespread anymore, but it's kind of like a cult thing where people like to know the words so that they can kind of see it in pop culture or use it with each other as kind of a wink. I like that. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, speaking of um, slavery, if you're ever feeling like sorry for yourself about what's going on right now and Uh how you're stuck in your house and all that, my God, I just finished a biography of Harriet Tubman. That'll make you feel more uh, grateful for what you have. I'll tell you. Oh, I'm sure. Good read. I mean. Well. Oh, it's fantastic. Oh and, gosh, I, you know, I I just knew the general gist, so it right, was fun same. to learn more specifics mm. and just really see what an incredible woman she was. And I'm sure lots of people like her mm-hmm. and how they did not give up. Mm. And The resilience, it, I know. It's insane. And I, I kind of can't relate to it because I'm always just like, how did they have that will mm-hmm. inside of them mm-hmm. to keep fighting? Because, mm-hmm. like, even if you were free, you're oh. still not in your, like, sort of home country or right. even with your family because they were likely sold to other um, slave owners and stuff. Yeah. It's just, holy shit. Well, and it's so great that you're learning about that and it's inspiring. And I think we should definitely do more of that. And I hope even just learning about it in, on, like, People getting excited or hearing you get excited about that will help them get excited about the material. And then maybe those teachers or people are educators or that they will have children and then those children will know. Mm. And then maybe, oh, maybe. Well, and you actually, you think, know, something in the history books, maybe. I know. Right. And that's one of the reasons why I'm feeling pretty good about homeschooling is Yes. That, you get to write the I'm history books mm-hmm. with the truth. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I just feel like when you see how people are acting about the restrictions that we have now, and I mean, they're really not that bad. Oh, for real. And you would think that we were putting them into slavery or whatever. Shackling. We're so spoiled. So spoiled. It's the worst. Right. Yeah. It's like, oh, I'm sorry. Is it hard for you? Yeah, I mean, And this is coming from me who complains about hard is like all the time, so. I can well, yeah, recognize I mean, it. You can complain about it, yeah. but like you're not saying I'm not going to wear that piece of fabric. Oh no, I'm wearing them in every it's every second of the day and in every color and in every <laughs> yeah. Even in her own house. Even in my own house. I can't be too can't be, can't be too safe. <laughs> okay. So, moving on, um and this is a, a little bit lighter and I thought you'd appreciate it, Sarah, because you enjoy um outdoor activities and you're also kinda like competitive. So yes. I'm going to teach you how to build the best sandcastle. <gasps> oh my god. I am taking <laughs> notes. We're going to the beach this weekend. Oh my god. Up to Cambria, okay. where it's like we're gonna like be at the beach for a minute. My God, I'm really happy for you. Yeah, because it's not like LA Beach. Like we're, you know, there's like nobody around these beaches. Like, you know, <laughs> so. Yes. We well, if you can, if you go, you can test yes. this out. Tell so, me. This was in Smithsonian Mag uh, wow. com, and they were saying, um, so you start with mm-hmm. the compaction, right? Got so it. Start with <laughs> start with a bucket of wet sand, mm-hmm. but. You want to cut out the bottom of the bucket. Oh, so you, as to make room for yeah. some air on the side so it doesn't do that weird suction thing that makes it fall apart. This is yeah. very, very good okay. life hack. Cut, <laughs> cut off the bottom, put it upside down, and then put the wet sand in through that bottom that's like on top, you know? And uh-huh. put it in there, pack it down. Put it in I there, pack see. it down. Right? And then you like hit the sides of the bucket because then that, like Sarah said, you don't want it to stick to the sand. Yes. And then it should come off. And then you make a bunch of those as your foundation. Oh. <laughs> so you do a bunch of that wet sand bucket situation. Yes. And then you just need to make sure that the foundation is smaller than whatever you're doing above it. Right. The foundation I mean, this seems obvious. is smaller. Sorry, bigger. Bigger. Sorry. Oh, okay, okay. I was like, mm. You were like, this changes. Egyptians everything. thought differently. <laughs> 
<laughs> right. They're saying like you can really build pretty much anything and it'll work and you can As long make as you have this, is, you're got to have a sturdy yeah. base. Yeah. You kind of want the top to be pretty small. Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay. And then you're going to want a, a palette knife for mm-hmm. the detailing. Mm-hmm. A straw so you can blow away loose Ooh, sand. Oh, this is a good one. <laughs> and then you want a comb or something with teeth so that those sort of boring straight right. edges, you may, you can add texture to those because mm. this, I love how into it you are. No, because I'm they, like already visualizing what I'm going to build. And because, <laughs> please, do you know how into it, Ren, how Ren and I got so into building one of those little towers with rocks, like at this little yes. landing and lookout where there were, you know. That we, you got scolded for. <laughs> yes, which was like, I'm like, don't even get me started on that one. I understand people. <laughs> I know the whole thing. Leave no, leave no trace. This was not one of those situations. <laughs> leave no trace. Um, but yeah, we got, we're so into that. And I know that we will be so into this. Yeah. And because they were this saying is like easy key... one to two hour project, project <laughs> right. for us. This is not a five minute willy nilly thing. The difference between a mediocre sandcastle mm-hmm. and an excellent sandcastle is cre- the creation of shadows. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. It provides depth. Yeah. And that's why you don't want to start too early in the day because, you know, if it's high noon, that ain't going to make some shadows. No, you want, you want magic hour lighting on that. <laughs> that's right. That's what it said. Oh, my God. I mean, it's great for us, great for sandcastles. Why would it be different? Right, everything looks better in magic. Yeah, hour. respect the, the get those angles. So respect I think the they lighting. were really emphasizing that you want to use a lot of water, more than you even think, and you okay. should have a spray bottle for the, oh, the pieces. Yeah, I see that too. Zhuzh. I have all of these things. Go. This is very okay. good. I'm going to make yeah, an ultimate evil. sandcastle. I, this might be something <laughs> I could get too into, but you know what? I also kind of like the, it kind of, it's very Buddhist. It's very much with the, mm-hmm. you know, like the sand. Well, yeah. It's impermanent. The sand, it's impermanent. I like mm-hmm. this and we mm-hmm. just let it go. And if you can c- get comfortable letting a sand castle go, then maybe we can get comfortable with letting like other things go. I don't even know what that means. That's beautiful. But, I love know, it. That sounds mm. really like, like, Yes. I like it. I, I would guess, though, that you would agree with me that you don't want to let go of your bioclarity. Never, ever, 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 ever. Ever. Right. This is the skincare routine for you. I don't know if no I'll ever what. use something else. I won't. Right. Why change no, now? Because it's been five years. We're nothing. If it ain't broke, no. don't fix it. If it <laughs> because it keeps my skin clear and i mean clear yes i do not get pimples yeah. anymore it sounds like i'm making that up but that is a true story and i've now, seen okay. i actually saw the before picture for the first time recently oh my god and she's probably traumatized not sarah's trauma- reaction I, I, was this doesn't even look like you i couldn't but i was like i, I, I had no words yeah and they well they keep expanding their line too so now they have um Sun protection, which is great <gasps> oh for when gosh. you're building your sand castle. I need it, this. I just got into the body wash. I'm gonna. I'm yeah, gonna they have, have to get a sun, sun filter yes, for your so face. Excited. They have sun shady for the body, this um, is great. and these are reef safe. You know, so they. This don't is very important. I have a big problem the... with skin with sunscreen clogging my pores, and this is exactly what I need. Well, and you know how you can't use certain ones in certain yes. areas because they're harmful to coral and uh, sea life. And these are safe to be right. used. Um, no environmental pollutants yes. in them, which is wonderful. Um, but it's just kinder skincare. And for me, the thing is that it's affordable. A lot of skincare lines are ridiculously priced. You can get healthier, more radiant skin today at bioclarity.com. You'll get 15% off everything on the site when you use code BRAINCANDY at checkout. That's bioclarity.com. And don't forget to use promo code BRAINCANDY at checkout for 15% off. I mean, it's also kind of silly to think that something that they like wouldn't want in the water because it destroys the ecosystem and like the coral reefs i'd be like okay with putting on my face yeah right that's so, what i'm saying right let's not do that give me the natural let's, stuff let's, not, let's do not do that okay next i would like to talk about oh i did see a cool little history of um you know the company pyrex that makes yes all the, do i know, you know pyrex come on now of course the only the only the only 
That's like the only. Uh, I know. Uh, it's like they have. Do you call? Th- th- it's like Pyrex. You don't even. I don't even know what else you call it. It's like Xerox, Google. Well, right. It's like Pyrex. Tupperware. Yeah. Tupperware. It's just yes, that just it is. is what it is. What do they even and call those glass casserole dishes? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, baking dish. Baking and dish. Yeah. They were describing how they came to be. You know, they're so common now, mm-hmm. and. Everyone knows these dishes too, like especially the ones with the patterns because everybody had them. Oh, yes. Like growing up, everybody had the same patterns and stuff. There was like that one that had the flowers on the side. Yes. uh, It was like kind of like orange and like burnt umber and like brown kind of. Yeah, we all had that. We had those. We also had the blue like dots, little tiny dots. Yes, 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 yes. And they were just saying how, like, we take it for granted that these just sort of exist in the world and always have. But apparently, um, like, they came to be because railway lanterns, the globes around them would explode when they would touch, like, snow or rain or just, like, really cold air. Oh, because it would get, oh, my God. Yeah. Yes. Like, thermal shock. I've experienced this from something before. Glass yeah, breaking when, like that. Yeah, when I worked at a restaurant, sometimes that would happen. If you just wash wash the glasses and then put ice in them, they would shatter. Wow, so crazy. And so they had to find a solution for it, and they found that adding boron changed their durability and made it so they could kind of expand and contract safely. Wow. And of course, as is so often with these stories, a wife of a physis- of the oh. physicist was like, "Hey, you know what these would be great for?" baking because i just shattered mine in the oven so of course it's like the nameless woman who's like sure could use this in the kitchen and then they just started making them and they called it pyrex which means like fire and then all their products had rex at the end so they stuck with the theme their first item was a pie plate and then basically women did the rest women were like okay but we need handles and we need a different size i love it Oh my gosh. And you know what? I just did like a Google search of like vintage Pyrex. Yeah. Oh, that is fun. Talk. I'm getting nostalgia chills right now. And these are gorgeous. I know. Suits. Like when we go to the Long Beach Antique Market, I always see them there. I want you to have all of these. I know. This looks like you need like your house. See? I'm obsessed now. Mid-century modern. I love it. Anyway, so that's cute and I love it and it's so... Fun. It's another thing that's like to be nostalgic about because yes. most of our grandparents or parents had them and it's just comforting. It really is. Uh, you Here's something that's not comforting. What? Apparently, uh, there is a trend going on in the evangelical world. Oh, okay. Um, where kind of like evangelical influencers, I can't believe that's a thing. I know. I was just going to say, Wow. <laughs> wow, that if you were to ask, you know, somebody or tell somebody about try to explain that one 30 years ago. <laughs> right. Apparently, you know, they have the same content problems as any other creator and they have begun making what they're calling wedding night videos. Oh no. Oh no. What? <laughs> Well, just like, or is this good duh. because we're like exposed? We're what, tell me, tell me. I should just. Listen. I mean, they're not making pornos, but they are making these videos for YouTube where they describe their wedding night. Because no. in the evangelical community, you're supposed to wait until you get married to have sex. So theoretically, this would be your first time. Okay, can we talk about how the first time isn't good for anyone? Well, right. Come on. In the history of. That I mean, or please, actually, you know what? Maybe that's not true. Maybe that there are people who have that wonderful story out there. I don't know about. Okay, but I, I mean, it's never going to be wonderful enough for anyone to want to hear the details. Definitely, not. I don't want to hear the details. No, but what is this? Mm, because this kind of feels like. So a lot of influencers like find what it is that people are like envying or or what people desire or what people want to aspire to I guess in a way and whatever they mm. what did you say you said this a long time ago whatever you're envious of is what you really or something like envy Ooh, it sounds brilliant I hope you remember <laughs> yeah it was like envy was related to 
something that you want but can't have or like if you really if you want, don't want to be you just have to work for that or something like that i can't remember dang i wish i could of all the things this one's an important so one so what do you think that they're doing um, in that vein th- that in the same it's like evangelical version of flexing and like stunting oh on people they're like it's flexing yeah this is like and they the, all say these stories sarah that it's like I, for me that wouldn't even be what i want where it's like yeah, we, no. <laughs> like, we went into a tree house. No. And, yeah, it's, like, crazy. They're totally they're like, doing you know, this. That's what it is. We lit 50 candles, one for every night. No, we- no, <laughs> no. I mean, maybe they did. But, <laughs> like, that's, that's like, the, I, it's, like, I don't know, telling somebody your dreams. Like, nobody cares about you. Like, <laughs> and if you do tell me and I do care, it's really just because I'm, like, I don't right. know. Right. It's like a train Shocked. wreck. Like, mm-hmm. I don't want... That seems... And that seems so... Because here's what that does. Because the, one of two things is going on. Either mm-hmm. that's not happening, and they're <laughs> saying that, which I'm annoyed mm-hmm. with, and or it is going on. And if that is happening, then I think that that is creating unrealistic expectations for what you think the evening is going to be, and <laughs> that... That, I mean, maybe it's, like, making it magical and wonderful, but, like, I don't know. Am I being too judgy here? I mean, we're definitely being judgy, but... It's not even the fact that they're doing that. I want, because I have my own stories of, like, romantic nights that, you know, rent is done for me. But I'm not going and sharing them, like, to say, like, this is what... It feels braggy. And that's my weird thing to brag about. If something is so sacred right. that you won't do it before you tell the state that you want, wish to be in a partnership, oh. then you probably shouldn't commodify it. Correct. Like That's if it's that it. sacred. <gasps> I didn't even think about well that's exactly what it what yeah this is this is the same as like it's right. like their version of showing off the shoe collection or showing off the like it's worse because they claim it that it's so sacred that is um wow and so special and like a union between you and god and your partner and it's like all this language where it's supposed to be elevated but instead and they're, they're putting like, commercials in between <laughs> yeah right on their youtube channels yeah that that doesn't yeah. that so to doesn't. me it's hypocritical yeah. by the way some some person i won't be mean had I never go on Reddit, but I was on there for oh. some reason, and I saw that in our like Brain Candy subreddit, someone said that it was hypocritical. This was from a year ago. Okay, hypocritical that you remember that oh, guy that came to work on your house that had like a oh. Confederate flag or yep. something. She, and this person, I think it was a woman, but I'm not sure. She said. Um, that's the same as like bakers who won't make a cake for a gay wedding. No, it is. No, it's not. Because a consumer gets to choose where they put their money. Right. You know? And, and I'm going to choose to not put my money in somebody who is, uh, believes in hate. Yeah. I mean, that's what the, voting with your dollars right. is. The cake place and everyone is just does it. Ha- the hate, more of the hate. And what the bakers are doing is discriminating based upon things that are supposed to be protected. Right. Like your identity. Yeah. And um, so it is absolutely not the same. Yeah. I mean, you can say that it's stupid or that right. Sarah was wrong to feel that way, but it's not hypocritical. You're right. Now, if the he, end. yeah, he would, it, it would be hypocritical like if, if, um, like, I don't know, he were hiring me for something and I said, no, I can't do that. I mean, maybe, but that's still, I still would be like, no, nah, I'm not doing that. But like, I'm still <laughs> then maybe then you are. <laughs> then, and I'm fine with that because if it's like you're being hypocritical towards a racist person who well, would make a comment about protected. the person that, then, then. Because pr- protect it, we protect things that someone, it's, it's fundamental to who they are. Right. Their gender, their race. Yes. Their um, sexuality. Right. All of that stuff. Yes. It's not. Your what choice, fl- what you what yes. you choose to, fl- yeah, God, oh, no. I don't like that. Was this a white woman? I don't like that. I don't know. It just you know, there's no avatar or anything. Oh, right. Well, yeah, <clears throat> you, that 
sometimes I'm like, this goes into, this is not the fight we want to fight, people. I'm and then like, the, the rest of the posts on there were just like, I wish other people from the show were on Reddit. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, it was just like yeah. one yeah. substance. I, don't, I was like, I, don't, I didn't even know we had a Reddit. And I was like, I better not go look at that. <laughs> I like it. I think it's cool that, you know, our listeners would be found in all kinds of places, but oh, yeah. they tend to be less on Reddit. Yeah. Well, they're kind of mean on there, right? Sometimes well, people can be mean as a whole. It's more like... Um, what am I thinking of? Male driven. To, to, no, Reddit. Yeah, that is what I'm thinking of. Yeah. Reddit is, um, has more men than other. Yeah. I feel like it's the opposite of Pinterest. <laughs> oh my God. That's so funny. That's how I see it. If there's like a spectrum of yeah. uh, gender or masculine, feminine, yeah, whatever. That's funny. <laughs> Reddit and 4chan are on one end and then Pinterest is on the other. What like the when, hell was the other men, thing you just said? 4chan? Yeah, 4chan I is don't even know worse. what that is. I mean, that's like borderline dark web because that's where the people go, like the, <laughs> the alt-right and stuff. <laughs> What are you laughing at? Because you just like got, you're like, yeah, that's borderline. Like, I just feel like, like, I, like this, you're like in your zone. Like, like, like this is like the same way I get excited when I'm telling you about like nature stuff and like <laughs> science stuff of, like that. I'm like, you are getting, you heard of online? You are getting <laughs> that excited about the like uh, online social media inner workings and wh- like <laughs> I am living for this because I'm like, oh, <laughs> tell me, I don't know about this. <laughs> They, on 4chan, like the shooters will go there and say, I'm mad at women because oh, they won't no. bang me. And then they go shoot a bunch of women. Oh, no. So. Oh, no. Yeah, it's terrible. Terrible. And like this was my whole thing when I used to do a, a bit in my act about how like when men are left alone, <laughs> they like rape each other and like beat each other up. When women are left alone, they do make stuff out of mason jars. <laughs> like that's what's <laughs> like they put their baby in a big cowboy boot and take a picture. Yeah, or like <laughs> like I mean, at, at the very least, daisy chain necklaces. <laughs> right, like when there's no men around, this is what we do. Yeah, that's what baby showers are, and that's what Pinterest is. Yeah. Oh my and, gosh, that yeah. is. This is very true. <laughs> that is hilarious oh god Suze, you're so funny anyway okay so let me see where i was um okay i wanted to ask you about this and i do this to you all the time i, I put you on the spot it. i love it when you do but it's because i'm desperate for answers yeah there was a woman this was in the it's new york post there was <laughs> What? I'm just laughing at how you said it's because I'm desperate for answers. I am. Yes. About the human condition, especially oh. the, the way the brain kind of malfunctions sometimes. Oh, my gosh. All the time. Can't even trust right. it. Right. And we can be our own worst enemy yeah. and all this stuff. So yeah. this gal, um, she had been through some shit and was dealing with like, a, I think she was grieving the loss of a loved one and stuff like that. And then one day she snapped mm-hmm. and started clucking in her backyard like a chicken Mm -hmm. and she truly thought she was a chicken and she didn't have any kind of history okay but what can you help me understand what happens in that moment like it's it's i mean that's like an extreme sure you know but you were really it's just completely disassociating and disconnecting from like the tr- like trauma or whatever you're experiencing is so intense. The brain does like this protective, like has to go into like, I need to protect you. And in order to protect you, I'm going to create this world where none of the problems that you were creating this stress for you even exist. And in this, so much so mm. that you are a chicken. And who knows where that came? Like, I, I mean, we see yeah. it, we've seen it before with the people, the cat people, the guy like so tattooing. So like the specifics the vary. Right. But the reasoning is universal. I mean, and this is my take on it based on like, sure. you know, yeah. the information I have and what I know. That but makes sense. Yeah. So it's like they want to create a world in which these problems couldn't even be possible. Can't even be possible. Like completely disassociate. Like I want to set like, mo- yes, move and away in their and you brain, can't even bother because if you're a chicken, ch- chickens don't have to worry <laughs> about chicken. sexual assault. Chickens don't have to worry about, you know, Get domestic abuse, chickens don't have. Well, I mean, you know, sometimes I yeah. have to worry about ending up on a dinner plate, but then you uh, know, <laughs> focus they have on their that. Own problems, right? So it's okay, it's a so way to almost th- like the brain to, uh, like reboot 
and mm-hmm. choose to not download any of the pre the last um, uh, um, like the last Trauma. the last version. You know, like when you say yeah. you, you, what do you call that? You b- yeah, like backup, you- like when you back up the phone, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. it's it's like didn't even save the last back. I mean, it does. It did. It's in there. It just chose to run on a different operating system. Okay, so and, and I'm I probably using can... a whole bunch of like t- like like internet no, terms that's... that don't make any that, but you get the concept because they're like a different operating system would be like I can hear, like uh, you know, <laughs> actually, no, I, I, yeah, I know, and like or maybe that's just like the, the Reddit, you know, guys, <laughs> right, or whatever that other thing for whatever you're talking about. So okay, yes, but well, that's so what I think. I know that we could not really know what it, what their brain right. is doing at that moment exactly, but like, what do you suppose her thoughts are like in that moment? Oh, in the chicken just moment, clucking. Like is it like just nothing? Chicken? Like I think, yeah. Like I think it it it's like a break. Like the brain. So like I know yeah. somebody who, when they had experienced extreme stress, mm-hmm. had amnesia like temporary yeah. amnesia with no other side effects very healthy yeah. nothing else and the brain goes into protection yes. mode and yes. it was just like uh you you've it it, it recognizes that that well really oh, wow. there's a name for this it's part of the well and it is disassociation like with the clucking and everything like then that but like <laughs> yeah. there are different ways different like survival or survivor yes. reflexes like um like uh gosh what are the heck are they called like catatonic like what the i can't remember the names of them i'm gonna i'll i'll, I'll i don't know maybe they'll come to me but where where sometimes there's like your muscles become rigid or mm. there are other physiological like effects and your brain just it, it recognizes that it, i am in a dangerous situation that i can't get out of so in order to protect you it just completely like moves that information to another and like goes around it i don't know what's happening inside there it would be interesting to know what like what is not because that would like hint like tell me that there's like a like a decrease in activation in like the prefrontal cortex Mm -hmm. and so the things that 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 help her piece that create meaning and like help her piece together yeah. like uh, uh, a sequence of events or um you know give like context and and stuff like that mm-hmm. like she would remember maybe that there was like a blue table but she couldn't tell you like what she had for breakfast lunch and dinner or whatever it is like PC, PC right. memories, but not the I stuff see. that like puts everything together. That's kind of like your executive functioning part of the brain. And so I think that you're like, you're, you're it talking like down. limbic system responses, like maybe heightened activity in like the amygdala or hippocampus Do you remember or like that. that guy that started the hashtag free, what was it? Something like free Coney or something. The guy that like... I don't remember the details, but this was like an African thing where girls were being kidnapped and exploited. And he created this little short film Mm. where he was explaining it. And he started this whole campaign that was bringing awareness to it. Um, This vaguely brings up, this like sounds vaguely familiar. Okay. Well then, so it was called Coney 2012. Oh yes, I do remember this. And he was just bringing awareness to this big problem yeah and then it blew the fuck up yeah and the guy jason russell he had the same type of thing and he ended up (gasps) on tmz walking down the street completely naked ranting and raving to himself it's too much and then when he talked about it later i mean he was just like it was all just like overloaded and my brain broke it's sort of yeah it that it just says i can't run i can't run this anymore this version i'm actually surprised it doesn't happen more often I think now it does happen it more often. The, you know who else it happened to? The woman from Superman. From remember, and she like wound Carrie up. Carrie Hatcher. What? No, no it that's wasn't Lois and Clark. No, yeah, it was. It was because people were saying like that it, that show was cursed Margo or something. Kidder? The one who ended <laughs> up in the middle, like people found her like wandering. No. Oh, somewhere. Anne Heche? Was it her? 
Yeah. Well, yeah, she that, had one, she had that too. She had that too. You're right. And it didn't that have to do with her uh, and something like feelings about her like sexuality and like coming out, I feel like. It was all just too much and she lost her marbles. Oh, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. You're right. Maybe it is more common than I realize, but unfortunately if you're a public figure, I mean, there's no way to well, hide that. And I mean, it also happened to my dad. He was picked up Why? on a 5150 because he you like You're lying. No, for sure. He like was diagnosed with testicular cancer, all this like stuff, lost his job, all that bad stuff. I mean, Lord oh. knows everything else that was going on and, you know, maybe stuff. And he lost his marbles. Yep. Pick, like found out where, I don't know where he was, like in the middle of like nowhere. Like, And then what happens? Do they just immediately, they just recover at some point or is it yeah. like a long road or? No, okay. I mean so like. they can just like, snap out I of mean, it. the people I know who th- th- just went back to being normal. Okay. Wow. With no real memory of what happened there. Okay. Yeah. Dang. It's like a different system. And then it like shuts down and comes back online. Like, you know, the person I know with global amnesia it came back slow. Like it started to come back. Yeah. And they were able to like piece together the. I mean, I'm sure sometimes that's a welcome thing yes. to not have a memory. It's well, and think about this is you have to think about where this comes from. Like go. Because if you have, oh God, this is like, I don't even want to get sad, but you have a child who's experiencing extreme trauma, that mm-hmm. child goes somewhere else in that, their brain because your brain can't mm-hmm. even wrap its, like it can't even, uh, it, it does so much, like if it's like a caregiver, like how can the person who loves me hurt me? Like it's too much. And so we, it's, it just goes, Neh. no, no, I can't. I got to protect you. And so- Thank you, mm. brains, for protecting us in those ways, you know? Wow. Yeah. I think, I think women, I know I can say this my, from my, my own personal experience. I disassociated a lot in like intimate moments when mm-hmm. I had not really worked on that. And so that, that's kind of escaping in that small yeah, way, going like, bye somewhere bye. else, okay. you know? And you're like, yeah, bye-bye. I'm out of here for a bit. And you just don't even realize it. Man. Yeah. Like in some ways I feel like the brain can be very weak in that way, but in other ways it kind of feels like, wow, what our brain will do yep. to protect us. Absolutely. <laughs> so I think that is, it's like strong. Mm-hmm. That's the, yeah. Wow. And when we're able to say, wow, look at what I survived and then maybe gain the tools to keep the brain in a more present place and manage the, those overwhelming things or remove ourselves from those dangerous situations. What was it that led up to this for her? Um, it was, you know, a death of a loved one and I yeah. think there were some other th- yeah. things, which, you know, yeah. those can be normal life events and depending on who it is, maybe super traumatic mm-hmm. or the way in which they die, stuff like that. Or how you learned how to process, like, there's so, so, so much at play. How did you yeah. learn to process emotions? Did, were you ever, mm-hmm. if you're like re- repressing, like... We've said this before. I know I've said this to you, Suze, that um, suffering, the equation for suffering is pain times resistance equals suffering. So if she's mm-hmm. experiencing the pain of that grief, but she's resisting the feeling, the emotion of sadness, yeah. trying to think, oh, I, I, I can't ever feel sad. I just have to have happy feelings. Like you're resisting this pain. And so you create this suffering and the suffering is so intense that your brain's like, I can't even handle it anymore and just like shuts off. Yeah. Goes offline for a bit. All mm. right. Well, on that note, don't forget <laughs> to leave us a five-star review. Yes. And subscribe. And just tell us how much you love us all the time. We cause... love hearing that. Oh, hey. And nominated for the podcast, podcast awards again. Podcast award again. So, like, you know, get ready to start voting for us. Yeah. Very exciting. I, I want to get a two for... Two for one oh, deal because yeah. we won yeah. last year, 2019. Yeah. I want to get it again. I want when they like announce us at these uh, award ceremonies that just happen inside my head, the, the announcer to <laughs> say, and now uh, uh, Brain Candy Podcast has been nominated two times and this is their second win. You know, like they do at the Oscars? Yes. Yes. That's it. I like I was playing that. that. Yes. This yeah, is Brain Candy's s- second win. They've been nominated twice and won previously <laughs> last year in the same category. Yes, I love it. Welcome good, to the stage. Sarah. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, we'll imaginary see you next time, shows. everybody. We love you. Bye. Bye.